Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this lovely little three drawer chest of drawers and this is for the guest bedroom in my doll's house and just a little space that I've got left to fill beside the dressing table. As usual the cutting list is in the description box below so let's get started. Begin by cutting all of the pieces shown in the cutting list apart from the pieces needed for the drawers and as usual we'll cut those once we've constructed the main unit and we can measure the openings and get exact measurements for the drawer pieces. Once all of the pieces are cut begin by sanding the surface of each piece on both sides using a 500 grade sandpaper and small circular motions. Once each piece is sanded use a soft brush to remove the sanding dust. Okay so we're going to start by making pencil lines across the back and side pieces for placement of the shelf pieces. So we don't have to do that three times we're going to join them together. So make sure you've got a nice flush line along the top edge there and then just pop a little piece of masking tape on. Same at the other side and then join them at the bottom edge as well. Turn the piece lengthways and we're going to make the first pencil mark 24 millimetres and that's 15 sixteenths of an inch from the top edge, what will become the top edge. So 24 millimetres and 47 millimetres and that is 1 and 27 30 seconds of an inch. So 24 millimetres, 47 millimetres, 15 sixteenths of an inch, 1 and 27 30 seconds of an inch. Do the same at the other side. 24 millimetres, 47, 15 sixteenths, 1 and 27 30 seconds. <laughs> We're then going to join those up, so place the rule just below the pencil marks to allow for the thickness of your pencil nib. And then when you join the lines, just take the line onto the front edge of those side pieces and that will help when we're lining up the shelves. Join the bottom line as well. And you can then remove the masking tape. Okay so we're going to begin by joining the side piece to the outer edge of the back piece so we've got nice flush top and bottom edges so we'll apply glue along the side of the back piece pop that back down attach the side Use your pencil lines as well to get that lined up. Press the pieces together and then what I'm going to do is bring in a spare piece of strip wood and just use that to press the pieces together like that. And that way you'll get in even pressure all the way along the join. And don't worry if your side piece sort of tries to flop in a little bit because we'll straighten that out when we attach the top, bottom and shelves. Bring in a spare cocktail stick just to remove your excess glue. Do that really carefully. And we can now attach the top piece. So that's one of your four pieces there. And this is going to sit on the inside edge and again flush at the top of the joined pieces. So apply glue along a long and a short edge, like so. Get it lined up the top of the back piece first and you can use your spare piece of strip to help you there by pushing both pieces up against it and then bring in that side piece to meet the side and that will square it off. Make sure you're pushing that piece right into the corner look at that from the top edge there just to make sure you're completely along the top ok 
give it a press together and you can hold on to it for a moment just until the glue begins to take. We're now ready to attach the first shelf piece and that's going to sit just above the pencil line. So again apply glue to a long and a short edge and then pop that into place again pushing it right into that corner get it lined up along that back edge first and then along the side press and hold and then again remove your excess glue and although the glue isn't going to be seen it's a good idea to remove it from those inside edges because if that dries and leaves those little sort of hard beads then you're going to have trouble getting the drawer into place. So always get rid of your glue. The next shelf again is going to sit just above the pencil line. So again apply glue to a long and a short edge. place. Pushing it right into the corner. Use the little lines that we did on that front of the side piece as well to help get it lined up. Press and hold and again remove the excess glue. I'm using both cocktail sticks now to do both jobs. <laughs> And the bottom piece will sit again on the inside edge of the joined pieces and flush with the bottom edge. So again, apply glue to a short and a long edge. <laughs> you know the drill by now. <laughs> and then sit that piece into place. Again, press and hold. So turn the piece onto its first side like that and apply glue to all of the open edges. Like so, lay the piece back down and then attach the remaining side. Again, using those little pencil marks to make sure that the shelves are staying where they should. You want to have a nice flush top and bottom edge as well. Just need to push that one down slightly. And again, give the piece a good press. Press and hold for a moment. And then I'm going to apply some masking tape just to hold it all together whilst the glue dries. Just pop the piece back onto the other side like that and I'm going to start with a piece straight over that side. So pull it nice and tight but make sure you're not knocking the top and bottom pieces out of position. Get that over like that. And then I'm going to lay it down and just put a couple of pieces straight across the front as well. One there like that. And if you put it across the shelf areas then you can give it a good press against the sides. Like that. And that piece can then be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the piece to dry, remove your masking tape and then sand on all sides. I hold it flat against the sandpaper and sand on all sides, including the front and back, and I use small circular motions. This will ensure that you end up with a nice flush piece. So we're now going to attach the plinths around the bottom of the unit. So just work out which is the bottom by measuring the drawer openings and the one at the bottom will be deeper from going from top to bottom of the opening like that. And then I've just used pencil to draw a T on top there so I know where I need to attach the plinths. So lay the piece onto its back like that and you want to take the narrower plinth. So if we've got those there like that and then we've got the two shorter ones which are for the sides. So 
the taller one of those two will be our front one which will include the bottom piece there as well so that will overlap so the back one is your narrow one and we're just going to stick that along the bottom like that and it should sit within the bottom of the unit so just measure it and trim a little bit off if you need to so it should be exactly the same width as the unit and it may just be a little bit longer now if you've sanded on the sides and you've sanded a little bit more off and I've just had to trim a tiny bit off of mine there so apply glue along the long edge of the plinth or one long edge like that and then press that into place along the bottom there making sure that both pieces are flat against your work surface and then with the sides again just measure to make sure that they sit along the side there and don't overlap at the front and again that will happen if where you've sanded you've just taken a little bit more off so that one's okay try that one as well yep that one's okay as well so as long as they're not sort of overhanging the front of the unit you're okay and then what we're going to do with both of these pieces is bevel one long edge so with your sandpaper flat on your work surface hold the piece at a 45 degree angle and as you bring it towards you keep it at that angle We just want to create that nice sharp bevel so I did five sweeps there and I think that's just right so I'll leave that one like that and then do the same with the other one and I normally count the number of sweeps and that way you know that you're getting an even bevel on both pieces sharp bevel there and then I just like to go over those with a piece of 500 sandpaper if I can find a piece just to tidy that up and get rid of any of those little sort of pulls in the wood or the fluffy bits as I call them like that, so pop that there same with that one and we're now ready to glue these into place so we're actually going to apply the glue along the side of that back plinth and then just along the edge of this of the unit here the bottom edge here and we want to come up by about 1.5 millimeters that will be the height of the overlap and it's just easier to put the glue directly onto the unit like that. lay that down take your first plinth lay it into place and you want it so the bottom edge is flush with the bottom edge of that back plinth in fact let's lay that down that might make it easier and then your the top of it should just be sort of in alignment with the top of this bottom piece here so going along the top there like that and then our front plinth will overlap that so they'll all look sort of like one piece once we've given them a gentle sand. So you can actually just use that other plinth as well just to make sure you've got that flush edge along the bottom there. Or you can use your piece of spare strip or something and then you'll know that one isn't sort of higher than the other. Otherwise our unit won't stand straight. You should have a nice flush edge along the back as well. So remove that line of excess glue. You just want to hold onto the plinth as you do that. Make sure you don't knock it out of place. And then we want to do the same thing again on the other side. So again, apply the glue directly to the unit. Same thing again. I'm going to lay that down because that makes it easier making sure you've got that flush line along the bottom and that at this front edge you're in alignment with that bottom piece 
Make sure that's sitting right to the back there. I can see that I need to come down with it a little bit at the back. Press that into place. And then remove the excess glue. So just pop that to one side to dry and you can stand that upside down like that. And we're now going to bevel one long edge of our front plinth. So the same thing again, flat on your sandpaper at a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to do those five sweeps again. Again, that's a nice sharp bevel along there. Tidy that up, get rid of the fluffy bits. We can now glue this into place. So bring the unit in. And again, we're going to apply the glue directly to the unit. But before I do that, I just want to make sure, again, that this isn't too wide. So you want it to reach the outside of the side plinths. And you may find that, like mine sort of curling in at the bottom there, just because it's not being supported by anything, you might just need to very gently pull them out at the bottom edge there. So measure it along the sort of top edge rather than the bottom. And I have got a little bit overhanging, but I'm going to leave that and then we can sand that off at the end when we sort of round over these corners. So apply glue to these open edges. And then along that bottom edge there. So position the plinth and also here you don't want it to overhang this bottom drawer opening otherwise we won't be able to get the drawer in and out. So just use your fingers to make sure that it's sitting sort of flush with that but not overlapping and you also want those flush edges along the side. Now I've got a little bit of an overhang so I'm going to sort of even that out so that's at both sides. Again make sure you've got that flush bottom edge. The important thing is to make sure you haven't got that overhang. And then if we've got anything overhanging at the bottom, we can sand that off. Sand it flat against our sandpaper. I've now got a nice flush line along there. <laughs> along the sides as well. This is where you need extra fingers. <laughs> so just keep checking the position and then give that a press into place. Now if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of masking tape around this. Mine's sitting quite nicely there, so I'm just going to press and hold. If yours sort of keeps moving about, if you use too much glue or something, you might just want to pop a bit of tape straight over and onto the sides. So once you've allowed enough time for that to dry, hold it flat against your sandpaper and just sand it in small circular motions. And that will ensure that you've got a nice flat bottom. What you can do then is bring in, I've got here a piece of 500 grade sandpaper and I'm just going to sand around the corners. So just go in from front to side like that. Just pull the sandpaper around. And what you're doing is just rounding off those corners and blending it in. Look at the other side as well. And that's then giving you a nice rounded corner like that. And then what you can also do is just sand that little sort of top corner there where the bevels meet. And you can pull that down. And again, you're just sort of trying to blend that in. So go across and down. And then you sort of get rid of that join in there. Do that at the other corner as well. And we're now ready to cut the pieces needed for the drawers. So as usual, I've given the measurements for the drawer pieces in the cutting list. But as you know, I always advise you to make your main unit first and then measure the drawer openings and cut these pieces accordingly. So do just use the measurements in the cutting list as a guide. And then you want to measure the width 
height and depth of each drawer opening and then cut your pieces leaving I always used to say half a millimetre but really a quarter of a millimetre is enough just to make sure that the drawers will then open and close smoothly and you want to take that quarter of a millimetre off of each of your pieces. Okay so to construct the drawers take your base piece and apply glue along each edge. down and attach your sides making sure that you've got nice flush edges along the front and back and I'm just going to get those into place like that and then bring in my piece of strip so I can really push those into place so I just pop one along each side like that and press them together and again when you're working with small pieces it's easier to press them together using these strips but also then you're getting even pressure all the way along so just give that a bit of a press and then you can slide that along and move on to your next drawer now I'm going to be doing a moulding on the front of each drawer so just a, a sort of bevelled piece of wood just to add a bit of detail just because it's a rather sort of plain cabinet otherwise but I haven't yet cut those and then once we've constructed the drawers, once they've dried and then we've sanded them to make sure that they fit nicely into the openings, then we'll cut those pieces. And again, that's just because when you sand the drawers, you may be taken away from the width or height and then obviously your mouldings aren't going to fit properly. So always sort of cut pieces once you know the exact size that they need to be. And you can cut them but then you're just sort of wasting pieces of wood if they're not the right size so once you've got along to the end one like that your first one should now be dry enough to continue with so apply glue to the front and back edges pop that piece back down and attach your front and back pieces and you want to make sure here that you're making a nice square box shape so you may need to pull out the side pieces to meet the back piece oh, got stuck on the like that so just sort of square it up front piece there as well And then once you're in the right position, or you're happy that you've got that nice box shape, then you can press the pieces together. Pick it up and give it a good press. Get along all the glued edges. And we're going to be sanding these as well, like I say, so we'll take off any little overhangs or anything like that. again that can just go to one side to dry and then you can move on to the next one so once the drawers have completely dried sand them on all edges and I usually sand face down as well like that and on the bottom and then along both sides and I've already done mine so I'm not going to do them again but also it makes such an awful sound when you sand them face down like that so I won't put you through that but then try them into place and they should just go in nicely if they're feeling tight don't force them as you might have trouble getting them back out again and also you don't want to do too much sanding or you'll end up with gapping around the edges so only ever do a tiny bit at a time try them into place and then do more if you need to so now I've sanded them and they all fit really nicely I'm going to cut the pieces for the front of the drawer to create that moulding so for the draw mouldings, I'm using a 0.8mm thick sheet wood, that's 1 32nd of an inch. And I haven't given measurements for these in the cutting list, as what you need to do is just measure your draw, so width and height, and then deduct 3mm or 1 8th of an inch off each of those measurements, and that will then leave us a border of 
one sixteenth of an inch or 1.5 millimeters around the edge. So I've cut mine here, top, middle and bottom, and I just leave them on my desk like that so I know which drawers they go back onto. And then to bevel the edges of these, rather than doing it against our sandpaper on our desk, because this wood is really flimsy, and if you try to sand it that way, it will probably crack. I just like to do it in my hand. So you just want to support the piece of wood as high up as you can, and then just sweep the sandpaper across, holding it at a 45 degree angle. And that way you're just creating a nice little bevel there. And this just adds a nice detail rather than just sticking a square, sort of straight edged piece of wood onto your drawer, which won't look quite right. So go along each edge like that and the long edges as well. And you can either sweep it like that or go from front to back, but just make sure you're supporting the piece as you do it. And just keep going around until you're happy you've got a nice even bevel. You can then pop it down on your work surface and just sand the surface of the piece, just using your small circular motions. Get rid of the dust, I'll just wipe it with my fingers this time. And then that can be glued into place. And I'm just going to do them one at a time just so that I don't get them all muddled up because they are slightly different sizes. Top drawer out there. So apply glue to the back of the moulding. Like that. Now I'm just going to pop mine into place by eye, but if you're not very good at measuring by eye, then you can use a piece of 1.5 millimeter strip wood and place one along the top and the side just to create that even border. Like I said, I'm just gonna do mine by eye just get it roughly into place and then you can sort of manoeuvre it to make sure you're happy that you've got that nice even border all the way around there. Get rid of your excess glue. Give it a press and then what I'm going to do is actually just pop some mini clamps on there just to hold that into place whilst the glue dries. of these smaller ones. Little orange bits twisting around on the inside there. That side as well. And then just pop that to one side to dry and you can do the same with your remaining drawers. So whilst the mouldings are drying into place on the drawers, we're going to prepare the top piece. So we're going to bevel along one long edge and both short edges. And I know you all know how to do this by now. Hold the piece at a 45 degree angle against your sandpaper and sweep it towards you, keeping it at that angle. And again, we're going for that nice sharp bevel. So keep going until you've got that shape all the way along and then you can do the same at each end. Once you've done that you can tidy that piece up in your hand with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper. So just sweep it along your bezels again just to get rid of any fluffy edges. So we're now ready to glue the top piece into place. So apply glue along the top of the unit. Make sure you get it right along the edges, into the corners, like that. And we're going to attach it so that the straight back edge is flush with the back of the unit and we've got an even overhang at each side. So get the back bit lined up first and then you can pick it up and have a look from each side 
just to make sure you've got that even overhang. And your little sort of beveled corners should be running up from the edge of the unit there. So you've got that nice line. So you've got that nice flush line along the back edge there. You can pop it down on your work surface to check that as well. And then to secure this into place, I'm going to use masking tape and clamps. So I've got those ready here beside me. Just get rid of the excess glue. So I'm going to put the piece straight over the top like that. Pull it nice and tightly. Make sure you're keeping those lines. I'm also going to put a piece over the back and that will hold it down at the back edge. Again, pull nice and tightly. <laughs> a little bit more glue seeped out there. And then I'm going to put these larger clamps along that front edge just to really hold that into place. Always make sure your clamps are in place before you let go of them so they don't ping off. And then you can just have a little check in there and make sure you've got all of the excess glue. Otherwise it sort of tends to dry in those little lumps and they're quite difficult to sand off. So it's best to get rid of it whilst it's still tacky. And that piece as well can then be left to dry. The draw mouldings have now dried into place so we're ready to attach the draw knobs. And I'm going to be using these little pre-turned 2.5 millimeter diameter draw knobs that's three thirty seconds of an inch so to begin make a pencil mark in the center of the draw molding so I begin by making a little pencil mark just going up there like that just very lightly and then turn and make your little pencil dot in the center level with that line that, make a little dot. You can then erase the pencil line and the little dot will stay there. So I've got my 1.6 millimeter bit in my drill here. That's just a little bit smaller than the part of the draw knob that goes into the drawer. But you can always widen that by using a cocktail stick and just twisting it around in the hole and that will just widen it enough so that you can get the little draw knob in. So drill down, keeping your drill as upright as you can and always give it a bit of a jiggle as well. So first of all just try the draw knob into place, see if you do actually need to make that hole any bigger. Yep, that actually sits in there quite nicely. So I then always just dot a little tiny bit of glue into the drilled hole and that will just keep the draw knob really secure in there. Pop that into place. And you want to make sure that it's sitting flat against the front of the drawer, otherwise it will be at an angle. So always have a look from the top there, and make sure that it has gone all the way in and that it is sitting <laughs> flat. Shoot something moving out of place like I just did. Like that, and then remove any excess glue from around the outside edge. That can then be put to one side to dry. So these pieces are now ready for paint, and I'm going to be using a pre-mixed emulsion which I mixed for all of the guest bedroom furniture pieces. And it's actually white mixed with a very tiny amount of a very pale grey. So it's got that sort of pale grey look to it rather than being a bright white. Okay, so that's the second coat of paint now on each of those pieces that's now drying. And after the first coat had dried, I gave each piece a gentle sand. So I'll now leave those to dry. And there is the completed chest of drawers. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that this is a piece that you can use in your own doll's house. 
If you do make this piece, then please share your photographs in my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You. And if you're not a member, you can request to join through my Facebook page and I'll pop a link to that below. OK, so let's go and try this into place in the guest bedroom. And that is going to sit just there alongside the dressing table, just to fill out that space there beside the door. And it also creates another display surface. And that's why I made it a little bit taller, just so that it sits above the height of the dressing table there. So a bit more still to be done in this room. Lots of bits and pieces to make. And I'm really looking forward to doing that, actually. I've got the little paintings that Matt did, the water lily paintings, to go up again on that wall. So I need to get those framed. And then I think some paintings or prints above the bed as well might look quite nice. I don't usually put paintings onto a patterned wallpaper, but I think that's quite a sort of large bare area up there. So I think we're going to need something up there. And I like paintings above the bed as well. But I've got lots of ideas for this room. So we'll definitely do a separate episode on dressing the rest of this room. But that's it for today. Again, I really hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.